Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric. We're going to be continuing the series on the Steam Deck, and more importantly, how to use Emu Deck to get some of your favorite consoles emulating on the Steam Deck. Because whether or not you're using it in handheld mode on the go or docked on your television, the Steam Deck is an absolutely outstanding platform to play some of your favorite platforms in a new form factor. You guys have been asking for Nintendo 64. So that's what we're going to do today. We're also going to examine how the emulation is, because the Nintendo 64 can be a tricky console to emulate. Before we get to Fire and Vile, though, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, and subscribe. That notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, they got a Patreon link down below as well. But as we scroll back on Conquer here, and Conquer's bad for a day, I am very impressed with what the Steam Deck can do with the Nintendo 64 emulation. It is doing a great job, but we're going to explain to you how to get it running in the first place. Now, if you haven't seen it already, go to my Emu Deck installation tutorial, but there is a link down below to the Emu Deck GitHub page that'll explain all of the different systems Emu Deck can handle, as well as the formats the files need to be in and whether or not a BIOS file is required for that individual platform. This is a great resource and keep it handy. So if you go down to Nintendo 64, you're going to see the emulator it uses, Moopin64+, and all of the file formats it takes, including the fact that no BIOS is required. Now you can put the games in zipped according to EmuDeck. I always unzip them, maybe it's just force of habit. It's what I recommend to do because it's how I test everything. So go ahead and whatever, use whatever program you want to unzip all of your files, games that you own and have cartridges for, so you're doing it fair and square. And you're just going to copy those over to whatever removable USB device you want. Because my tutorials are based on using a dock and a USB thumb drive stick or whatever else you want. You can send them over via FTP. And if you want to see a video on how to deal with some of that stuff, leave me a comment down below. But all my tutorials are predicated on just using a USB device because it's the easiest thing to teach and everyone knows how to plug it in. And if you do need a recommendation for a dock, I have a link below to the one I use. It is not a sponsored link. I don't make any money off it. It's just so you guys can buy what I use. But whether you use a thumb drive, whether you use a micro USB adapter with a little USB dongle on the end, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you have some way to get the files into your Steam Deck or else nothing's going to work whatsoever. And when you put it in that removable storage, you're going to see there's a mount and open option. Just go ahead and select that and everything's going to pop up onto the screen you need. And you'll see the entire folder structure here of that SD card we were copying over to. And all of the games that we have in our collection that we want to play on Steam Deck. Just go ahead and highlight them. Left click and you're going to see a copy. That is going to work perfectly fine. Go ahead and copy those files. And then we'll move over to wherever we have Emu Deck installed and go to primary. You'll see the emulation folder. That is where we want to start. And like I talked about earlier, there is no BIOS file required for the Nintendo 64. So don't worry about any BIOS related issues. It's just not a thing for the system. So if we go back to emulation and into the ROMs folder, this is where all the different games go for all the different systems. So of course, Nintendo 64 being N in the alphabet, we're going to scroll down here until we get to the ends and we're going to see two folders, N64 and N64DD. DD is for the disk drive. If you want to see a tutorial on that, leave me a comment down below and I can talk about it. But you're going to want to put the games you own, the files for them, into the N64 folder. Go ahead and copy them over and it's all it takes. From there, go ahead and relaunch Emu Deck and you're going to go down to Tools and Stuff and that is going to be where we get to Steam ROM Manager. For some systems, you can use the BIOS checker to see if that BIOS is there, but like I said for Nintendo 64, not required at all. Go ahead and open up Steam ROM Manager and come up to Preview. By default, all the parsers will be on, so you'll be able to just generate app list down in the bottom left hand corner, and then it'll take everything on that SD card and show it to you. If you have a lot of stuff, use Filter by Category, come to Nintendo 64, and you will see all the games I just added are available here. Now, Sin and Punishment comes up as a different game, and that just happens sometimes. I'm not sure why it does. You can change the information, but for the tutorial, I'm just leaving it as is. If you want to change artwork for any game, just hit those arrows back and forth. Once you're satisfied with what you have, just go ahead and hit Save App List, and it'll say Done Adding Removing Entries. All your games are ingested. Now you're going to go back to gaming mode so we can actually play the things. Because the setup isn't where we have the fun, it is in playing the games. And if we go over to library, you're going to see we now have a Nintendo 64 folder with all the games we added in there. If you don't see this, it means you either put your ROMs in the wrong folder or you didn't use Steam ROM Manager. Just go back early into the video and follow along. But I will say off the top, Nintendo 64 emulation via Moopin on the Steam Deck works extremely well. 
Nintendo 64 emulation is not easy. You need a decent spec system to be able to pull this off. If you throw it on a Raspberry Pi 4, you're going to get hitching, freezes, and terrible frame rates. But I will say, everything I tested here worked relatively well, and I will go through some of the games I tested in a little bit. But running around in Banjo-Kazooie on the Steam Deck just feels great. Now you're definitely going to maybe want to change some of the controls around in the bindings because the Nintendo 64 controller was a very unique thing, but I would say 9 out of 10 times the setup that MU Deck puts for the Nintendo 64 is going to work perfectly fine. But let's move over to a game I know and love, one of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64, and that is Rush 2. If you've never played this game before, I highly recommend it. But I have put hundreds of hours into this game over like the last two decades. I've been playing it since a kid and I love it. And it's the number one game here that if it wasn't running well enough, I would be able to tell completely. And the controls work, the graphics look exactly how they should, the physics engine and everything seems to be working exactly as I remember it. This is just a 10 out of 10 performing game on the Steam Deck and it is great. And you'll see here, I do scale the resolution in post and there's some black bars here, but that's because we're going to go into the core options very quickly. And I will say right off the top, compared to any other emulator that I have played around with, on MU Deck and the Steam Deck, the core options here are almost a limitless. There's going to be so many different things you can articulate, but the good thing is you really don't need to change that much. The defaults for MU Deck do a great job. You'll see on the RDP plugin we have Glide N64, it's what I recommend, and then we can go down into the actual settings for that feature. You'll see here that we have resolution modes for both 4x3, or standard aspect ratios, as well as 16x9 or widescreen aspect ratios if you have widescreen hacks employed. I recommend leaving it at 1280x960, and I always play my Nintendo 64 games at 4x3. That is for nostalgia, you can play around with that for sure. And you will see we have a native resolution factor. This is the internal upscaling of the resolution. By default, it is set at 4x, and that is where I leave it. I have noticed if I go up anymore, I can start to lose some frames in gameplay. But 4x is perfect for the handheld Steam Deck, and it also looks great docked how I'm capturing it here, so it's what I recommend. Threaded render is on. I don't feel any input lag, but if you want to play around with it, you 100% can, including some of the bilinear filtering. But I will say that 90% of the options within the core menu, the ones that I am not talking about, are the ones that are set as defaults. I just recommend leaving them as is. Like the CPU core here, that dynamic recompiler is fine, and the RSP plugin being HLE, those are what work best in my experience. So like I said, even if this core has more options that you can play around with than anything else, I recommend leaving 90% of it exactly as is under pet controller options. It'll be automatically defaulted to a memory card and that's going to be allowed to save your game so you can play with that as well. But let's take a look at something like Perfect Dark. This is probably the one game on the Nintendo 64 that pushes the hardware more so than any other game. But if you can think of something different, leave me a comment down below. And I will say I did a video on trying to emulate the Nintendo 64 on a Raspberry Pi 4 and this game ran at like 2 frames a second. And like I said earlier, Nintendo 64 emulation is not a light lift on hardware. It is intensive, but this game is playing amazingly. It looks great with that 4X internal upscaling of the resolution. All of the controls feel fluid and the motion just works. And it's running at the frame rate that I think it should be running at. This is an intense game on real hardware. It basically makes the Nintendo 64 feel like it is sweating. And here on the Steam Deck, under MU Deck, with the Moopin Core, everything feels exactly as it should. And this was one game that I expected to see a little problem with. I will say in the intro, there can be a frame or two that hitches, and that seems like it happens on almost all Nintendo 64 intros, but emulation for Nintendo 64 is not perfect, so you cannot expect perfection here, but this is extremely good. Now moving on to a game that I know so well, Bomberman Hero, not only the gameplay, but the soundtrack, exactly as I expected. Go ahead and listen for like 30 seconds, hear what the emulator sounds like, and I'll come back and talk more about how it performs, what options you should use, and whether or not you should play it. But enjoy!
I have heard the Bomberman soundtrack more times than I can count because this was one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games as a kid and it sounds exactly as I remember it here. And that is the thing, just because it looks good, just because it plays good, if it doesn't sound good, it's not gonna be as fun of a time. And the Nintendo 64, unless you modify the hardware or have a CRT, is not the prettiest console when you upscale it. So in a lot of ways, using emulation here on Steam Deck is going to give you potentially a better experience than using the original hardware, unless you've invested in expensive mods or keep PVMs around like I do. But moving on to different games, I will say every once in a while, the emulation can be a little bit dark. Now, Doom 64 is just a dark game. It looks dark if I upscale my Nintendo 64, but it's not this dark on my PVM. So every once in a while, you might want to adjust the brightness to see what's going on a little bit more. And I did just encounter it in Doom 64, it feels a little bit darker than original hardware. Believe me, comment down below. Doom 64 is not a game that I have played an absolute ton of, so maybe I'm just misremembering it, but it does seem to my eyes just a little bit dark on the navigation front. But again, it's an amazing game, an interesting version of Doom, and it is running again perfectly here on the MU deck setup. And that is the best part about this so far. Everything that I've thrown at it is just working. The sound looks great, the graphics look great, it's that Nintendo 64 look that you're either very nostalgic for or think is ugly. People don't seem to have any other opinions, it's one or the other. But Mystical Ninja starring Goemon here, another game I played a ton as a kid, looks incredible with that 4x upscale, and that's what I love about the default settings that MU Deck has picked. Something like this you can push to like 6x because it's not asking as much in the Nintendo 64 as some of the other more intense games are, but I think here at 4x it still looks incredible. Running around, everything is smooth and everything is fluid, and that's all that really matters. If it was dropping frames or hitching, you would know immediately in the capture, but it is doing none of those things. And that is just the best part about this, because the Nintendo 64 is an awesome console that has a really fun library, but using original hardware for it is quite tricky, and if you do want to emulate it, you pretty much need a decent PC, and that's the greatest part about the Steam Deck, is it is just a great PC in the palm of your hand, making it mobile. Moving over to something like Sin and Punishment, I will say that I did see more hitching in the intro to this game than I did on any other intro on the Steam Deck, and it didn't matter if I did it at 4x resolution or even at 1x, it just seems to hitch ever so slightly, and that's just something that's going to be endemic in Nintendo 64 emulation. It's not a knock on the emulators, it's not a knock on the people that write them, it is that the Nintendo 64 is a complex piece of hardware, and emulation for it just is not 100% perfect yet. So if you see hitching here and there, it doesn't automatically mean it's the Steam Deck spec at fault, because I did put this intro onto my PC, and I have an i9-12900K with a 3090, and it still hitches. So it's definitely a situation where the emulation is just hitting a little bit of a stutter, and not so much the Steam Deck hardware. But as you're running around in Sin and Punishment, this game at 4x resolution, with all of the default settings, looks absolutely spectacular. And that is the great thing. You can play around with the settings to try to eke a little bit more performance out if you want to get into the deep cuts on it. But if you just leave the 4x3 resolution, as I showed you, and you use the 4x internal resolution scale, pretty much everything you throw at MU Deck and Moopin on the Steam Deck is going to run 100% great and you're going to be able to enjoy the game. And that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Sure, there might be a stutter here and there in intros, but is it going to affect your enjoyment of playing Nintendo 64? No, and being able to play these games on the go, on the train, while you're traveling, absolutely spectacular. But if you follow the steps of this tutorial, you'll be playing Nintendo 64 on your Steam Deck. And if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'm happy to help. Short of that, go start playing N64. Bye bye.